Star Trek, Prodigy Season 1 Episode 17 Review, Ghost in the Machine. With the finesse of Moriarty and the riveting action of a Dixon Hill novel, Star Trek, Prodigy Season 1 Episode 17 sucks us into a labyrinthian mystery adventure with a sinister motive. In keeping with the bad stories revealed on Star Trek, Prodigy Season 1 Episode 16, the personal Holodeck programs provide further insight into each of the crew members' desires and motivations. And while the villain behind the trap is pretty obvious in hindsight, it's hard to watch Hologram Janeway realize her subverted programming has betrayed them all. While Star Trek, Prodigy Season 1 Episode oh, 12 oh. Aboard the Borg Cube was purported to be the haunted house narrative, I found the hijacked Holodeck here more sinister. There were many dangers with the dormant Borg cube, but there was a clear mission to be accomplished. That was easy. On the Holodeck, the entire point was to obscure the purpose of their being there. At first, I'll admit I considered this was a take on Star Trek, The Next Generation Season 4 Episode 17, Night Terrors, where the crew experienced hallucinations due to sleep um... deprivation. Maybe the replicator tainted the ice cream? However, when Roke Talk can see and identify the glitter smooch, Jankom Pog finds in the corridor, that theory falls apart. Gwyn, did anyone else just see a feral human suffering from malnutrition strolling around on our ship? Jankom, no, but some odd-looking glittery puffball is giving me... kissy lips? Permalink. No, but some odd-looking glittery puffball is giving me... kissy lips? Zero Cellar Door Society speaks to their need for intellectual challenge. <clears throat> like Data and Picard, solving the inexplicable is Zero's jam. They want to stretch their logical muscles, puzzling out mysteries, and using their deductive skills and powers of observation to find the solution. <laughs> I love that Zero ultimately has to abandon their initial plan when they realize it's wrong. It's not something we see often enough in mystery adventures. Typical super sleuths never go that far off track. 
Jank on Pog's Rock'em, mm. Sock'em Back Alley Brawl program where all his opponents look like the Dauntless's Dr. Noom belies his comments about only using mm. words to get payback on the abrasive physician. It's interesting uh. that the ship's engineer's recreational hello deck program has nothing to do with engineering, but then again, Jank on Pog's percussive maintenance approach has always struck uh. me as less gear de la forge and more the fawns. Gwyn. Do you realize what you're doing? Pog, making a series of bad decisions? Ah, yes, Jankum Pog is aware. Uh. Permalink, making a series of bad decisions? Ah, yes, Jankum Pog is aware. Merv always steals the scene for me, but having him break out his song and dance routine is a surprise and treat. I'll assume D. Bradley Baker voices the blue guys singing too. And kudos to him. Uh. Again, it just goes to show that we all have dreams. Murph may have morphed from a blobby slug to a bipedal ninja stretch creature, but all he wants to do is entertain. The Key Club nightclub is a slick turnaround point for the plot. When we're not reveling in Murph's crooning, Zero and Rogue Talk are slicing away the obfuscating distractions to get to the heart of their puzzle. Also. Gwyn's daddy issues, totally legit, there's just no other way to phrase it. I do not mean to make light of them, sneak into the setting with the diviner tending bar. Another moment of unexpected joy is hearing John Noble sporting a Bostonian accent and offering Gwyn some sage advice and comfort. I wonder if that twist on her father's personality is something the Holodet deduced from Gwyn's previous uses of the program. Dal's fantasy of a crew that respects him is awfully endearing. Mm. For all his chutzpah, we have to remember that, of everyone on the Pertostar, Dal's got the biggest case of imposter syndrome. His insecurities are absent as he gives out orders on his pirate ship. It's heartwarming to see what a difference that confidence makes. Mm. Speaking of heartwarming, I demand some time in Rogue Talk's Delta Heart. Magical veterinarian program. Seeing the patients inserted into the various settings in the merged program is intriguing enough to warrant a visit. Maybe a short trek? Hun? Huh? After all, she's been through. Rogue Talk deserves a 5-15 minute respite from being chased, enslaved, or forced to easy. participate in a staged fight club. Who's with me? And this brings us to the reveal that Hologram Janeway is the culprit behind it. Granted, yeah. it's a rather oh, unique situation yeah. that revealing the villain is a shock to literally yeah. everyone, including the villain herself. As mentioned above, Hologram Janeway is really the only possible saboteur for several reasons. Yeah. First, if corporeal enemies had secretly boarded the ship, Zero would have sensed their presence and probably their intentions. Second, we've known ever since they found the living construct in the secret subdeck below the bridge that Janeway's memory and programming are fallible. Third, needing Dal's command code for dealing with the holodeck malfunction felt immediately suspicious. In terms of ways they would exit the neutral zone, I did not have betrayed by the hologram training program on my dance card, but it's both an elegant and logical mechanism to activate. Mm. Kudos to the writers for that. Yeah. Now that they're heading into Federation space, yeah. what will they have to do to avoid infecting the Dauntless or any other Starfleet vessel they meet? Will Hologram Janeway deactivate herself rather than risk endangering the crew further? Can the crew afford not to have her presence supporting their endeavors? Hit our comments below with your best predictions for how they survive this next adventure. <laughs> Ghost in the Machine Review Editor Rating 4.0 5.0 1 2 3 4 5 User Rating 4.3 5.0 1 2 3 4 5 Rating 4.3 5.0 4 votes
Diana Kang is a staff writer for TV Fanatic. Follow her on Twitter. Mm. Yeah. Uh. 